The first screen that opens in the wizard allows you to close the wizard. Click Cancel to close it, or click Next to continue. Here, I'll click Next. In this window, you must enter the admin password to continue. The default admin password is 1111. To enter that, click the Admin Password field. Click the keys on the virtual keyboard for 1111, and then click the Enter key. Here you can also change the default admin password to something different, which we highly recommend to improve the security of your surveillance system. To change the password, click the box for New Admin Password to checkmark it, and then enter the new password in the New Password and Confirm fields. Click the New Password field. Click in the New Password on the virtual keyboard, then click Enter. Do the same for the Confirm field. When finished, click the Next button to continue. Here you can set the time for your recorder. Since all recorded video is time stamped, it is extremely important that the time be set correctly in case video evidence from your surveillance system is needed. To set the time, first open the Time Zone drop down list and then select your time zone. You can also select GMT if you prefer. Next, click the date field and then click the format you prefer from the drop down list. If you need to change the system date, click the system date field and then click the current date in the calendar. To change the system time, click the time shown, then use the up and down arrows for each field to change the value. Click the Next button at the bottom of the window to confirm your settings and continue. This screen allows you to set up your recorder's network settings, the settings in the NVR that allow it to communicate across a LAN. Initially, your NVR is configured to use a feature that exists in most LANs called DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This feature enables the DVR to acquire its network settings automatically. The settings you see in the window for IPv4 address, subnet mask, and IPv4 default gateway were acquired using DHCP, and these settings are compatible with the LAN the NVR is connected to. One drawback of using DHCP is that the IPv4 address, commonly referred to as IP address, may change when the recorder is rebooted. This is the dynamic aspect of DHCP. It is preferable for convenience when connecting to the NVR from across the LAN, that the IP address of your NVR remain constant. This is called a static IP address. So to use this menu, first click the NIC, that is Network Interface Card, Type field to select the option that matches your LAN settings. If unsure about what to select, choose the self-adaptive option. Next, to set the static IP address in your NVR, Click the box to uncheck the Enable DHCP option. At this time, you can either choose to use the settings for the IPv4 address, subnet mask, and IPv4 default gateway that were provided through DHCP, or enter your own settings. You can enter your own settings by simply clicking the field and then using the virtual keyboard to enter the settings. Note that these settings must be compatible with your LAN and other devices that share it. Consult with your network administrator for recommended settings if necessary. In this example, I'll change the IPv4 address to 192.168.75.8. So to do that, I'll just highlight the last field and then enter 8 using the virtual keyboard. Lastly, you can enter both a preferred and alternate DNS, domain name server, IP address in the fields provided. These entries are optional. When finished, click the Next button at the bottom of the window to save your settings and continue. In this screen, the status of the HDDs, hard disk drives, installed in your NVR, and those attached to it are listed. If the internal HDDs were pre-installed, there is nothing you need to do with them here. HDDs that were installed later 
and an eSATA disk drive attached to the eSATA port on the back of your NVR need to be initialized by the NVR before they can be used. Initialization does erase all data on the disk. To initialize the disk, check the box for the device in the list, click the INIT button, and then wait for the initialization to complete. Disk initialization can take several minutes. When finished, click Next to continue. In the last screen of the wizard, you can configure your NVR to record video from the cameras in either of two ways. Normal, which is continuous recording, or by motion detection, with which video from the camera is recorded when motion is detected in the camera's field of view. You can configure some cameras for normal recording and others for motion detection recording. To use this menu, click the camera field, then select the camera you want to configure for recording. The numbers correspond to the IP camera channel on the back of your NVR. Next, click the Start Recording box to checkmark it. Then click either Normal or Motion Detection. If you want to use this recording mode with other cameras connected to your NVR, click the Copy button and then click the boxes for the other video in channels you want to configure with the same setting. Repeat this procedure using other recording mode for other video channels if you prefer. Click OK to save your settings and close the wizard. Additional recording settings such as setting up a recording schedule, selecting what part of the field of view to sense for motion, adding cameras installed on a LAN to your NVR, and configuring channel resolution, frame rate, and other settings can be configured in the NVR menu system. Refer to the user manual for your NVR or other videos for more information.